The purpose of this show, the of this show is to guide you to realign, you to realign with habits that get you to live the life, live the life you've always dreamed of. Right. This, this is the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast with Jesse Yule. This is the Habit-Based Lifestyle, where you can access your full potential right now. Finally break free from destructive habits. That dream life, if you want it, you can have it. This is where you transform your health, mind, business, and relationships. Or do nothing and keep your life the way it is. But if you're ready for change, you're in the right place. This is where you're gonna learn how to live a habit-based lifestyle. You, you, you are tuning in to the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast with, with, with your host, Jesse Yule. This is this is the habit-based lifestyle. Let's go. If you've not listened to the last episode, just simply press pause and go back to the previous episode and listen to that one first because it will not make sense today because we're starting on day two. So today we're continuing on this day, day two of challenge-based lifestyle. And I would wake up early on a Tuesday morning, 5 30 a.m. I would go out, go for a run uh, down in the hotel gym, and and it was bright and sunny, uh, but it was a cold, wintry day in Seattle. The trees were riddled with snow. Everything was white, and you could see Mount Rainier, and the sun was beaming off the mountain. If you've ever seen Mount Rainier, whether it's snowing or in the summer, it looks like a painting. And if there's anything that I've missed since living in California, it's seeing that on certain days, but it's such a massive mountain and it's an amazing to witness. But my assignment back from day one, as I began to work on this last night was just to simply write down as many resets as possible. And that morning I would begin to continue writing these down. You see, I'd spent the night before and the morning writing down approximately 15 to 16 events that I needed to reset. The goal was to write all these out with the feelings and the emotions and the experience And it was a lot of work. It was a lot of heavy work because you had to go back to things that it's like, hey, I thought I've dealt with this. But I found my way to the property that morning and would end up getting there around nine, greeted at the door and immediately start the day with going through these resets and just talking about them, talking through which ones we're going to use. Everything from the setting, the time, the place where this actually happened, who was involved, what age I was, what age other people were, what happened. What was the trigger and sticking with the facts in that place? Like what was the actual trigger? What was the facts of what happened? The people involved, the effect that it had on me, making it as specific as possible and then attaching it to the story so I could bring up the emotion, so I could bring it to the surface and then sitting in that place and then letting gratitude come into play, feeling this gratitude where you would begin to open up. You'd walk in the other person's shoes and in that place you'd find a gift and you'd begin to accept your part and your responsibility. And I'd spent literally the next three to four pod sessions over the next few days doing this. And if you're listening to this, you can imagine going through a photo album of your entire life from the age of five I think the the latest event I had that I had to reset was around 37 or 38. Imagine if you had a photo album and you were looking at all the pictures of the events in your life and you began to pull out a picture and this picture actually represented a movie of an event or trauma that took place that you actually wanted to go back to and reset so it no longer affected you. You see, I've done a lot of work like this before, so I was skeptical. But I leaned in and I did what was asked. And after all I did by making this investment to be here, I'm like, I have to do this. I have to play all in on this. And one of the greatest problems we have is we focus a lot on forgiving others. This was one of the experiences that that I went through. And for some, this may not be that much of an issue. But for me, I've always had a hard time forgiving people. And I've never really understood why. Listen, I carried around a ton of pain for years, being critical, mad at people, and not even knowing why, like holding grudges, literally grudges that just built up. And then I began to think about how much 
I actually think about this. How much time and space does this actually take up in my mind? How much does this pull me out of living in the present? And then I began to see is like, what if the path to forgiveness was really not that complicated? Like, what if it wasn't as complicated at all? What might be possible if I could just learn to forgive without having to wait weeks, months, or even years, and for some, even decades? How much more freedom would that offer me in my life? How much more freedom would that offer you in your life? You see, I found a path to forgiveness. And it wasn't about forgiving other people, at least not initially. It was about forgiving me, forgiving myself first. And maybe you're listening to this and you're like, man, you know, you need to forgive other people. Well, yeah, I do, I do believe that. But the first person that you're going to have to forgive is yourself because if you don't forgive you, you carry that around to all the other conversations and you really won't forgive others. You see, when is the last time you actually forgave the person standing in front of the mirror, the man or the woman in the mirror? You see, I wrote a book called Man in the Mirror, but I missed this part of my book. I missed this part of forgiveness in my book because this man or woman in the mirror is just a better version of you. You see, forgiveness is the greatest gift that I received the next two days. And I would spend the next two days forgiving myself for what my part was in each of these events. And in this moment, I realized I could never let go and forgive others because I hadn't forgiven myself. And once I did that, there was no one else to really forgive. So the biggest lesson I want you to get out of this is if you haven't forgotten what the other person did, maybe it's because you haven't forgiven yourself. Chances are it's you not forgiving you. And if you start with that person in the mirror, you may find you won't have to forgive anyone else because you're the one who's manufactured this story in your own head and they haven't had the same experience. Maybe they have. And if you feel like it's in order for you to go back and forgive them, great. But I think the first person you need to consider forgiving is yourself. Guys, thank you for listening today. I'll be back to wrap up the final day, final two days of 40 Years of Zen and the lessons that would go with them. And if you're looking to connect further with a group of like-minded people, join myself and so many others in the Habit-Based Lifestyle Secrets group on Facebook. This is where I'll be dropping daily habits to help you live to your full human potential. And if you want to be my next case study, and begin living this life that I call habit-based lifestyle. Maybe you have questions. Maybe you have some comments or, or some requests. Feel free to contact me, jesse at habitbasedlifestyle.com. You can also check out my website, habitbasedlifestyle.com. I would love to hear from you and let me know how I can help you. We'll be back next episode. Have an awesome day. The purpose of this show, the purpose of this show. is to guide you to realign. With habits that get you to live the life life. you've always dreamed of. This this is the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast with Jesse Ewing.